This is Eureka Math, Module 5, Lesson 5, and our objective today is to use multiplication to connect volume as packing with volume as filling. Okay, let me explain what they're talking about. So when we have been talking about volume so far, we've been talking about volume in cubic units, right, in cubes. And you have a cube like that, and then you fill it with more cubes, and you pack them in there so that they all fit perfectly, okay? And we're packing them in, right? So each of these has, a, has a cubes in them, and I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cubes in there. And I know that there's 12 cubes in there because it's 3 times 2 times 2, right? Length, width, height. And I know that that equals 12 cubic units, right? But now we're going to talk about volume not as cubes, but in filling, we're going to talk about volume as in liquid. So let's say I have a jar, okay? And now I want to know how many milliliters are inside that jar or how much it can fill, right? How much can fit in there? So each one of these little cubic centimeters, so one centimeter cubed, actually equals one milliliter, okay? So if I have one, and I'm gonna, let's like take a cube, take this little cube, and we're gonna melt it down into a liquid, and then we're gonna fill up this jar, okay? And one will reach one, okay? And then I'll take another one, and then I can get it up to two, okay? So instead of packing, as in cubes, we're going to fill, as in liquid. So that's what they mean. That's what they mean. Sometimes their objectives are hard to understand, but I think that, that makes sense, right? All right, let's, so let's go back to the problem set. Lesson five problem set. Name on your paper. Okay, determine the volume of two boxes in the table using cubes, and then confirm by measuring and multiplying. Okay, well, two boxes. I don't have two boxes. I have a speaker, and what else do I have? Oh, yep, I have this decorative little case that was given to me as a gift. So I'm gonna use these two. Now I'm gonna need a a uh, measuring tool, which I happen to have right here in my sewing kit, because all of my rulers are at school. Okay, so, determine the volume of two boxes on the table using cubes. So any two boxes that you have, okay? But they need to be boxes, they need to be cube shaped. So this has rounded edges, but we're going to pretend that it doesn't. So, here it's got two and a half inches, okay? So my length is two and a half inches. My width then is going to be the small one here, is one inch. And I admit to you that I am rounding to the nearest half inch because uh, I don't wanna get this too complicated. And here actually let's do quarters. And this one is three and a quarter, okay? three and one quarter inches. Okay, now how many cubes could I pack inside there, right? So if I had one inch cubes, how many one inch cubes could I get inside that? And I'm just gonna call this box number one. In fact, I'm not, I'm gonna call it JBL speaker so that I know what I'm talking about. And you can use whatever thing you find in your house. I have another speaker here too. Oh, this is a cube as well. Okay, so any cube you can find, any sort of uh, square box. Here's another thing. All right, here I found a box. Okay, any sort of cube that you have. And measure it, and I want you to find the length, the width, and the height. And you can measure that in centimeters or in inches, depending on what kind of ruler you have. Okay, so we don't actually have a number of packed cubes but we are going to find the volume. And how am I going to find the volume, right? 
So I know that length times width times height equals volume, so I have two and a half times one, and I'm going to put a parentheses around that, times three and one quarter. Okay, well, two and a half times one, that's easy, that's just one. Now I can say two and a half, I'm sorry, it just means two and a half, times three and one quarter, and do you guys remember how to multiply fractions? I'm using fractions on this one, you know. So I'm going to use the distributive property here to multiply two times three and get six, and then one half times three, and that will be one and a half. Then I'm going to take two times one fourth, which would be one half, and one half times one fourth, which would be one eighth. <coughs> and then I have to add all those up. So I've got six, seven, seven and a half, plus another half would be eight and a half. I'm sorry, eight plus one eighth. So it would equal eight and one eighth inches cubed. Okay. If I can just make sure I got that right. Yeah. So if I had eight and, a, and an eighth, so eight and a little bit of one inch cubes, I could fit them in here. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would probably actually be more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, something like that. Okay. So there's my JBL speaker. And it, it's going to, the volume for that is going to be 8 and 1 eighth inches. Okay. Now this is still just kind of a review from yesterday. We're just, we're just finding volume, but we're finding volume of actual things. So whatever you have in the house, if we were in the classroom, I would give you all the same shape boxes. But we are not. We are at home. So, And here's this beautiful gift that my friend gave me. Look, it says, good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. My best friend sent that to me for Christmas. Isn't that nice? Okay, so I'm going to measure it, and I'm going to use centimeters this time. Okay, so my length is 10 and a half centimeters. Please use your labels. My width is... Six and a half centimeters. Wait a minute. Nope, sorry, the seven. Seven centimeters. And my height is going to be, let's see. This is my length. This is my width. Now my height would be, wait a minute. Length. Aha. There we go. Width. There we go. Which is ten and a half centimeters. This is a square box. You can see it's 10 and a half by 10 and a half. That's why I was confused. 10 and a half centimeters. Okay, now I can find out how, what's my volume, and I'm just going to call this gift box. So I'm excited to see what kind of boxes you guys come up with. And that's going to be 10 and a half centimeters times 7, and then times 10 and a half again. So, 10 times 7 is 70, and 1 half times 7 is 3 and a half. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a multiplication, not addition. Okay. And then, wait a minute. Nope, that is addition, sorry. Okay, so that's 73 and a half. That's what that is. Now I'm going to multiply that by 10 and a half, and you remember your distributive properties. So 73 times 10 is 730, and 73 times a half would be 35, 36, 37 and a half. Nope, yep. Wait a minute. I'm going to divide 73 and a half by 2 to find this answer. And I can actually make that a decimal if I want. 2 goes into <coughs> 7 three times. I don't know how many heads. 
one and three left over, and that would be six times, which is 12, and then I've got 1.5, and that's seven. Seven would be 14, and then I'm gonna drop down another zero. Okay, and that would be five. So 36 and three quarters, or 36, um, 0.75. So let's just go three quarters. You know, but 0.75 equals three quarters, 36 and three quarters. And you should know that by now. If you don't, I'm going to work on it. So 73 times 10, 73 times a half. Now I have to take the half and multiply it times five or 10 and get five. And then one half times one half is one quarter. Oh, look at that. We're going to add up nicely here. So now I've got 730 plus 36 plus 5 plus 3 quarters and 1 quarter equals 1. So now I've got 6 is 12, carry the 1 is 7, 772 centimeters cubed. I think I could fit. Think I could fit that in there? It actually has a lid. I probably could fit that in there. 772 centimeters cubed. Interesting. Okay, so using the same boxes, record the amount of liquid that your box can hold. So if I filled this box with water, which I'm not going to do because I don't know that it, that it, it can handle that. But if I were to fill this box with water, how much water would it hold? So what did I say? Centimeter, one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. So I'm gonna put that up here. One centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. And I made a mistake here when I used inches. I might have to go back and erase that. So the gift box would hold, well, if it's one to one, it would hold 772 milliliters, okay? And using the same box from problem one. Ah, see, I messed up there and I used inches. You know what, we're just gonna, mm, can't really do that either. Let's see. Well, we'll just measure it in, we'll measure it in centimeters. We'll just go back and measure it in centimeters. And hopefully you didn't mess up. So you just have to wait for me. So that is, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just going to erase that and I'm going to put eight centimeters. I'm sorry. Please measure it in centimeters, eight centimeters, because we were converting to milliliters. So it's kind of important that we use metric. And then I've got, and I'm rounding a little bit, two centimeters there. And then my height is six and a half. Okay, six and a half centimeters. Okay, now I'm gonna have to go back and, and recalibrate here. That's okay, I have less fractions, so it probably won't take as long. Okay, so length times width times height would be eight times two times six and a half. So I'm gonna multiply the eight times the two first. Okay, eight times two times six and a half equals 16 times six and a half. Then I'm gonna multiply six times 16, six and then 16 times a half. So 16 times six would be six, seven, eight, 96 plus one half, which would be eight. And that equals 104. There we go, 104 centimeters.
cubed. That makes more sense, too. So if I melted this down, I could fit seven of these into that. I bet I could, actually. Close. Pretty close. All right. So if I'm, again, if I'm going one to one, this would be 104 milliliters. And that's my JBL speaker. Okay. So I'm just converting centimeters to milliliters. One centimeter cubed, right? One cube. That's a centimeter. If I melt it down and put it in a jar, it's going to equal one milliliter. That's the great thing about metric. Okay. Show the water in the beaker. Okay. Shade to show the water in the beaker. Okay. We have to use our imagination. If we were in the classroom, I would get out the beakers and the water and we would have fun and then we'd probably roll it into a science class, but we're not together. So shade to show the water in the beaker. So we're just gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick five milliliters right here, okay? And then I'm gonna shade it in. Right? At first there are five milliliters and this is just, we're just adding it. So five milliliters and if I took a syringe, Right? And I added one more milliliter. It would take this from here all the way up to here. Right? So if you add five milliliters plus one milliliter, you're going to get six milliliters. That seems pretty obvious, right? Now, if I have the same five milliliters and I add a one centimeter cube to it, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so you can actually imagine me dropping it down in there. Right? If I were to drop this cube into the beaker, and I know that this is one centimeter cubed, I know that because each side is one, one and one, length times width times height, one, one, one. Okay? If I were to drop that in here, how high would the water rise? How high would the water rise? Well, I just got done saying that one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. So it's going to displace the water and it's going to move the water up a whole milliliter. So after one centimeter cubed is added, it's still going to equal six milliliters. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Gosh, we are, these are some fun activities to do in school, so I'm sorry that we are still at home. But what conclusion can you draw about one cubic centimeter and one milliliter? Well, I keep repeating it, so I think you probably have it figured out by now. One cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. Do not forget to put that little three. This is your final warning. I will mark it wrong. All right, put the three the little uh, cubic. So the tank shape, <coughs> sorry, I'm still working on that cough. The tank shaped by a rectangular prism is filled to the top with water, okay? Here's the tank, it's a water tank, okay? And they put this thing, filled in. will the graduated cylinder hold the water in the tank? If yes, how much more will the beaker hold? If no, how much more will the tank hold than the beaker? Hmm. Ah, okay, wait a minute, hang on. Okay, I got confused. Sometimes these questions, all right. The tank, shaped like a rectangular prism, this is the fish tank. It's a fish tank, you guys. It's a fish tank and the bubbles are rising up. Okay, it's a fish tank and it's filled all the way to the top with water. Okay. Will the graduated cylinder hold all of the water in the tank? So let's say we have to clean out the fish tank. Will this, right here, will this big old jar, this big old bucket, hold all of the water that's in the fish tank? Okay, if I pour it in here, will it all fit? We have to know before we clean the fish tank. Otherwise, what are we gonna do, right? So you'll fill it all, you'll spill it all over the floor and your mom will get mad. Okay, will the cylinder hold the water in the tank? If yes, how much more will the beaker hold? If no, how much more will the tank hold in the beaker? 
So <clears throat> we have to figure out how much it holds. It holds one liter of water, of H2O. You remember that's water. So one liter equals how many milliliters? 1,000 milliliters, okay? So I'm going to leave the comma off because I find the comma is sometimes confusing for my Spanish speakers. Okay, so there is 1,000 milliliters in one liter. We know that because we know how to convert. Right? We multiply it by 10 cubed. We got three zeros there. Now, we have to figure out how much water is in here, and all we know are the dimensions of the tank. Well, with that we can do it because volume is measured with length times width times height. So, if the length here, here's the length, is 13, and the width here is 8, and the height is 10, I can figure this out, okay? So, first I'm going to multiply 13 times 8 is 24, carry the 2, 8, only 10. So there's 104 times 10, which equals 1,140. <sighs> oh, well, centimeters cubed. If this is 1,040 centimeters cubed, and this one liter is the same as 1,000 milliliters, will this fit in there? Will the graduated cylinder hold all of the water in the tank, all of it? No, it won't, because this is more than that, isn't it? How much more will the tank hold than the beaker? The tank holds, now it's asking more than the beaker. If no, we said no. How much more will the tank hold than the beaker? Well, the tank will hold, the tank holds, we're going to have to subtract, We've got 40 centimeters cubed, or we can write it as 40 milliliters. Nope, the tank holds 40 milliliters more than the beaker. And how do I know that? Well, I just found the volume of the tank and the volume of the beaker, and then I subtracted one from the other. Number six, a rectangular fish tank, see they use fish tanks a lot with this, and it's just, I don't know, it's whatever, I always had fish when I was a kid, measures, I am going to draw a picture, I like to be able to see what I'm talking about, do you see how I did my rectangle, and then I'm going to, I drew my three lines, and then I'm going to connect them, that's how I draw mine, so this is going to be 26 by 20 by 18, okay. The tank is filled with water to a depth of 15 centimeters. Okay, now the tank is 18, but we're only going to fill it to 15. So I'm cutting a whole layer off here, right? So if this height, the new height of just the water is 15, okay? The height of the tank is 18. This is going to be important information, okay? So this whole thing is 18, but this is 15. That means that the air space between the water, this is, I'm gonna make it blue for water. Okay, and the top is three centimeters. Okay, 15 plus three is 18. All right, what is the volume of the water? The water in milliliters. Okay, in milliliters. Make sure that you label correctly. So of the water, now we, saw, we said that the tank is filled to a depth. Well, height and depth are opposites. So they kind of, in this instance, mean the same thing, right? Because height means from the bottom up, and depth means from the top down, okay? But it still means that up-down number. So we're going to talk about this up-down number here. Okay, so we've got length times width times height to find volume. And my length is 26. I'm going to erase those lines that I just drew there. The length is 26 by 20 by 18. 
the length is 26, okay? The width is 20 because none of those things changed. The, the size of the bottom of the tank is the same. But the height, and I'm only going to use the height of the water, which is 15, not 18, so be careful. So you have, that's that where the reading is careful, okay? So, let's see. 26 times 20 is 0, and then 12, and 1, and that's 520 times 15, which is 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 1 is 26, drop the 1, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 5 is 5, 0, 0, 8, 7. So, I've got 7,800 centimeters cubed, but it asked in milliliters, so I have to convert that to milliliters, but thankfully centimeters cubed and milliliters are one to one, so it's just 7,800 milliliters, okay? Now, I don't have to put the cubed here because we're talking about liquids, so there's no sides to liquids. Right? How many liters is that? Well, we know that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So we're just going to divide 7,800, divide by 1,000, which will give us seven, now what? One, two, three, so I've got to move my decimal point. One, two, three, and I'm going to turn the comma into a decimal point. 7.8 liters. Okay? How many more milliliters of water will be needed to fill to the top of the tank? <gasps> okay. All right. Be careful here. Now, they're asking milliliters. FYI. We want to find, and then change colors, <coughs> we want to find the volume of the space above the water, okay? So we need to figure out what the volume of that space is. So if we wanted to fill it all the way to the tippy top, how much more water would we need? So still volume equals length times width times height. Nothing's changed there. And our length is still 26. And our width is still 20. But the height number we're going to use now, we're not going to use 15 and we're not going to use 18. We're going to use 3, right? Because that's the space between those two numbers. So now I've got 26 times 20, which was 520, right? I already have that number from up here. But now I'm going to multiply it by 3. So 520 times 3, 0, 6, 15. So equals 1,560 milliliters, okay, or centimeters cubed, but they, yes, okay, they did ask for milliliters, good. All right, so I could put 1,560 centimeters cubed, but that would be the same as milliliters. All right, explain how I know. Well, we found the volume of the empty space, okay, the space above the water. A rectangular container is 25 centimeters long and 20 centimeters wide. This is number seven, completely unrelated. I was still thinking we were working on that, but if it holds one liter of water when full, what is its height? Oh, okay. Here's what we're going to do. This is a little algebra for you. What we have is the volume equals length times width times height. Okay? We know that it is 25 centimeters long, and we know that it is 20 centimeters wide, but we do not know how high it is or what the height is. But we know it holds one liter of water, okay? So we know that the volume is one liter, 
okay? But liters and centimeters aren't super friendly. So we're gonna move this back into milliliters so that centimeters and milliliters can be happy together. So I'm gonna convert this one liter, I'm gonna convert it back to 1,000 milliliters equals 25 centimeters times 20 centimeters times what? Okay, so how are we gonna figure this out? Well, I mean, we could multiply these numbers and see what we get. If we got a thousand, that'd be awesome. Let's see, 20 times 25, and five times zero is zero, five times two is 10. Drop down another zero, two times zero is zero, two times two is four, so I've got 500, right? So this is 500 centimeters times some unknown number is going to equal 1,000 milliliters. Well, that's not even as hard as I thought. So 500 centimeters times what? Times two, right? So I'm gonna erase that question mark. I'm gonna put two centimeters here. So what is my height? That's the missing number. If it holds one liter of water, one full, what is its height? The height, I'm gonna change colors again so you can see it. The height is two centimeters. So I could even draw that if I wanted to, let's see. So I'm going to make it 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters. But then I'm only gonna make it two centimeters high, so boop, just a little one, just a little one. Just a little fish tank. Okay, so, and this would be 25, 20, and then this one right here is two. And the volume of that equals one liter. Cool. Yeah, boy, question six and question seven kind of made you think, but I like it, I like it. All right, now go back to do your exit ticket here, and it's asking you to find the volume of the prism, and then it says shade the beaker to show how much liquor, liquid would fill the box, okay? So you're gonna find the volume, and then you're gonna pour that volume into here, and you're gonna draw a line. That's all, that's all for today. Then go back and finish your homework, please. If you have questions on it, we can talk about it in class. Lesson five homework right there. All right, ooh, that looks a little complicated. Looks good, I like it. Challenge you, you've had a few easy homework days, but this one's a little bit more challenging, great. If you have any questions, let me know in class. Have a great day.